find evidence that there are liquids on the surface. So that big ocean went away, it was replaced by the sand sea. People immediately said, oh, well, maybe Titan's all dry. Well, it turns out um, it's all hard and real thud uh, down on the surface. And they actually designed it to survive all of those eventualities. Turned out it landed with something between a splat and a thud. Um, here's a picture from the Huygens probe as it went down. Now, these are terribly JPEG compressed uh, in order to get it back off the probe. Um, but it did see things like this, all these branching channels going across the surface here, um, evidence of a lot of stream activity. This is a pretty small scale bar, by the way, so it's just 300 meters across. Um, so these are lots of little tiny river valleys coming together. And as it got down toward the surface, let me just point out that it landed, it landed out in this dark stuff, uh, out at the mouth of these stream channels. And it got down to the ground and found this surface that uh, was littered with uh, a lot of icy, rounded icy cobbles uh, all over the place. So these are fist-sized cobbles here. And um, in between these cobbles is kind of like pea gravel-sized material. Okay. Like it was blown away. And um, sorry, what? It was blown away. Blown away. The cratering or, or around the fist-sized object, it got blown away. Yeah, yeah. It does kind of look like there's a little scoop around here. Yeah, it's right, like the right. wind has sort of blown some of this material away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the air temperature is nice and cold. You know, 290 below Fahrenheit. And the consistency of the surface. They actually had a little probe that, that sort of measured how hard the probe hit as it went down. I'll, I'll stick with the on that one. Yeah. And it, uh, the closest consistency they could come up with is that the surface is kind of like creme brulee. So it had this like little crust and then it was soft underneath. I'll stick with the on that one. Oh, hot pick? Oh, sorry. It's, um, it's about uh, one and a half times the density of the Earth's atmosphere. So it's not actually too different from the Earth. But it's, it's a lot taller. You, since the gravity is lower, you need a lot more mass to get that much pressure down at the bottom of the atmosphere. So it turns out that um, the surface of Titan seems to be kind of like wet sand. And actually, when they landed, it turned out some methane started evaporating out of the surface because the probe was slightly warmer than its surroundings. So it looks like you might have liquid methane sticking together this wet ice sand. Um, and it, it sounds kind of like an Earth beach, but with completely different materials. Mm -hmm. Looks um, like Mars. It, well, it does look suspiciously like Mars. Okay? Maybe recycled the images, but, <laughs> but on Mars, on Mars, these rocks would all be angular, and the fact that they're rounded actually tells you that they've probably been tumbled around in a stream channel, uh, or tumbled around by some kind of liquid, like you'd find rounded rocks on a beach or in a stream bed. Mm -hmm. And this is what got me excited as a geologist. I was like, wow, this looks like an outwash plain, like you find in Death Valley, you know. Have cobbles washed down these stream beds and deposited on the, the valley floor beneath. Um, so I was like, how's it formed? What's the ground made of? You know, is, is there a methane cycle that's doing this just like the water cycle on the Earth? Um, I want to know about the sediment. And I want to know, like, how does a methane, like, liquid methane river work anyway? Does it <laughs> actually work the same as a water river on the Earth? Um, so that was a question that I got interested in and started investigating these rivers on Titan. Here's just a couple more pictures of these branching stream channels going everywhere uh, across the surface. Highly eroded surface forms. This is a kind of a hard to look at radar picture. And they've also found near the North Pole uh, that there do appear to be some liquid bodies on the surface. Here they've colored it convincingly, but actually they're just darker than the surface. We don't know that they're blue like this. Um, so it's all colored. But there are these large pools of dark, radar dark material on the surface. This one out here is about the size of Lake Superior. Okay, so large lakes uh, covering parts of the surface. And we think this may be where a lot of the liquid methane is hiding at the poles. Yeah? There's could be long ridges there. What's the center of the Okay. Sorry, which? No, to the right. To the right. Hand area. To the right? Oh, right yeah. center. Here? Or well, the center. 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 Oh, these right. things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. These are actually um, image artifacts, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. these, this radar data gets returned in strips, and those strips all don't quite get mosaic together uh, correctly. For those of you who've ever tried to. 
do things like that in, you know, in Photoshop or something. You never quite get it exactly right. Unless you're really good. Yeah, here you see these radar stripes going across here again. Yeah, it's, that's, that's the same kind of image problem. Sorry. Being a planetary scientist looking at this stuff, I don't see those things anymore. So. <laughs> because I know what they are. So I, you know, I, I got interested in, like, you know, does this operate just like a, a um, stream channel on the Earth would? And uh, so I started working with some terrestrial geologists trying to figure out this answer. And naively, I thought that we knew the answer about how these things got eroded on the Earth. Well, uh, <coughs> turns out we don't actually um, understand that fully either. Um, at least we don't understand it at a deep physical level. Like, we, we've observed it a lot, but the physics behind it turns out to be quite complicated. So it's hard to scale that to what's going on in Titan, but we're, we're starting to work on it. So we're still in the early stages of understanding stream erosion on uh, Titan and the Earth. Uh, this is a project that I'm working on currently, is trying to, trying to understand this. And you know, we sort of feel like, uh, like my son here, just, you know, what the heck is going on? <laughs> just depositing all this going on the surface. Um, but the reason that, what drives me forward as a planetary scientist, the reason that, you know, I get excited is that we're contemplating this familiar process, you know, streams, we see them every day. Here we found them on a different planet, a completely exotic location, uh, and it starts to challenge our assumptions about how these streams actually work. And it's gotten some of these people who study streams on the Earth, you know, they've done that their whole career, they've started getting really excited again because suddenly they have a different example of a stream using completely different materials and it challenges their basic assumptions that the liquid has to be water or that, you know, it has to be running over rock. You know, you can, uh, you can start to challenge all those assumptions and start to see everything in a new light. Um, my initial work that I've done in this, in this area has shown that um, Titan may be, may be behaving a lot like desert badlands. The ice at these temperatures has about the same strength as sort of loosely consolidated sandstone. Okay? If you've ever been out in the badlands in the desert, you know, it's sort of like a crumbly sandstone material. And it erodes into these spectacular, you know, little valleys. Um, and then it has these flat plains uh, in between. And this is a lot like what we saw at the Huygens site, where we saw all those little channels all densely networked together, and then Huygens landed on this little plane that was uh, outside those channels. 